In reality, most car folks are people with very simple wants. For example, a naturally aspirated V8, nothing crazy, maybe a little bit south of 500 horsepower, wrapped in attractive sheet metal, preferably achingly beautiful, and if we're really pushing it, a folding roof, ideally made of canvas. Now, putting all of those attributes together, is that really too much to ask for in this life? As we discussed in the tech review, there's about a 5% weight penalty when going to the convertible. With that, here we go. And that's normal. God, that sounds really good. Oh, you're almost not paying attention to it pushing itself up the hill with that. God, that sounds good. Uh, I'd be lying to you if I noticed a huge difference in the acceleration between the hardtop and the convertible. But can I say again, that sounds really good. Let's downshift a little bit more. That's the, oh God. And this is a product from Toyota? Well aware that the design direction of Lexus as of late is very polarizing. And I am one of those folks that have been positively polarized. And a very big reason for that is the details of the interiors of most new Lexus, and especially in an LC500. And that extends now to the convertible, because when you first get in this thing, you're like, okay, how do I put the roof down? There's no button up here, there's no button here, there's no button there. And you're almost give up in frustration, and then you realize they've hidden it. And they've hidden it amongst this wonderful little door here. I think, at least hope it's covered in leather. It's got this satin finish button to release it, comes up, and then there's the button for the roof, as well as a separate button to operate all four windows simultaneously. We need to talk driving dynamics, but not so much in the terms of absolute going around corners, but chassis flex. And there is a bit here. This is not like that 911 convertible we recently drove, or even some of the larger Mercedes-Benz convertibles. This has... Um, there is definitely a question in my mind as to, God, that sounds good, as to whether this car was originally intended as a convertible, because it doesn't have quite the structural rigidity of other luxury convertibles. It's unfair to compare this against a 911, but against a Mercedes-Benz like E-Class convertible or S-Class convertible, absolutely. And this, the chassis flex is more here than it is in those cars. Two things we need to cover back here. Number one, there is a windscreen that's fitted as standard to all of these, this very small piece of glass. However, there's an additional windscreen that is on offer. Uh, you can see the mounting points for it here. And it's like the ones we've seen in many German cars where it's a two-piece net that folds. The bottom part goes into these anchors here and the top part folds up to reduce the wind buffeting from the wind coming in from behind the car and then keeps it from going to the front passenger compartment. That I would prefer to see fit at a standard. A trend in fancy convertibles as of late is an HVAC system that automatically adjusts based on the position of the top. This is no exception, although there are some party tricks here. Uh, it adjusts the upper vents, provides more air through the upper vents based on the top being down. But then there's a trick that it provides air directly to the back of the driver's hand. Let's try that. Let's downshift here and get a bit more aggressive. And I got the air conditioning on. Um, yeah, I do notice a bit more air on my knuckles. It's a strange feeling. Um, it's a little bit more noticeable than a similar system they had in the 911 Turbo S Cabriolet. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game of mine, the Options Game, with today's contestant, Santa Maria Madre de Dios, one of the most stunning cars Lexus has ever produced in its short lifetime. This, for the avoidance of doubt, is one of the most reliable cars Lexus has ever produced in their short lifetime. And yes, she has lived in California all her life, and yes, she has low miles, and no, she is not for sale. Now, to the start of the show, 2021 Lexus LC500 convertible for a base price of $101,000. That's something we do not see very often. Zero is at the end of the base price. Usually it's like a 45 or a 91. Here it's just zeros. Uh, and that, for the avoidance of doubt, is about $8,000 more than the hardtop version of the LC500. 
Uh, to that, we add the stunning 21-inch forged wheels, which do make a difference, and they should for $2,650. And then two options that are somewhat puzzling that they are additional on a $100,000 car. The head-up display is $900, and the limited slip differential this is supposed to be a sporty GT. That's optional at $460. And then there's the paint. It's called infrared. Looks particularly stunning with the caramel interior. I would have preferred the tan top. Either way, I do have to say, when this car was floating around for people like me to drive them, there were two other cars in the country. There was a yellow one, and there was a silver one. Uh, clearly, the infrared is by far the best color choice, and it only is a $595 ad. I think that's kind of a win. Uh, then there's some confusion here. If you were looking at a coupe, uh, there is a dynamic handling package that is an option. It's about a $9,500 option, but most importantly, that adds four-wheel steering. You see the dynamic handling package and or the four-wheel steering is not on offer in an LC500 with a roof that goes down. And let's call this a humble request. Can we look at this decision again? Because I feel very strong now that I've driven the car that the four-wheel steering will only add to the dynamics of an LC500 with a canvas roof. Anyway, pressing on. The touring package, and this brings good news and bad news. Now the good news is it adds things like the stunning uh, semi-aniline leather, and, and then it adds the upper body heating, something I think that would be useful in a convertible, and then it adds the absolutely magnificent Mark Levinson sound system. All very usable things. However, uh, the only way to get that package currently is to have the back of the headrest of the car embossed with the Lexus logo. Now I'm not mad at the logo, but Sogasan, this car is already stunning. It attracts so much attention. In the short time that I was driving it, people came at me like I was parting the Red Seas like Moses himself. We don't need logos on the back of the headrest to add additional attention. And you know what? An open letter to other manufacturers that make luxury GT convertibles, don't copy this. Uh, especially considering you pay $5,290 for that package. How about $4,500 for the package and no embossed logos? Uh, anyway, delivery process and handling $1,025 for a price as tested of $111,920. You and I have driven a lot of Mercedes and Porsche convertibles over the years, and I look at those as the high water mark in terms of the experience with the roof up for a soft top convertible. Uh, this is, it's right up there with that. The execution almost looks to be the same. I honestly can't tell you if it's the same company, and if I have my facts correct, Mercedes and Porsche jointly own the supplier that supplies the tops for their cars. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the same. I can't honestly say it is, but it's really close. The things I do for you. This, it's gonna hurt. Oh yeah, she's coming. She's not stop. okay, she stopped. Um, suffice it to say, this really is a two-seat car, one with a parcel shelf that is beautifully finished and has a subwoofer, but that's about it. So I am a big fan of the interior design of these things, have been since day one, and it's really a function of the very fancy toggle switches, large knobs, and thumb wheels. Uh, but the rest of it, it's kind of a mixed bag. There's this trackpad, and please, only computers, not cars. This is not designed for safe driving. Uh, but then what they do is they split things up. Uh, they have some functions with the toggle switches and the knobs, and other functions buried deep in the menu there. And there are some odd choices, like the air conditioning compressor. That is something that's a high-use item. Why is it buried in the menu there? That's whether it's a coupe or a convertible. But the convertible adds to that complexity because it has a neck warmer which I have to say works incredibly well, not on such a warm day today, but we'll try it another time. And then there's the heated and cooled seats and the adjustments to the HVAC system based on the convertible being up and down. That's all buried in this menu here. There is no reason it needs to be buried in that menu here. Well, I'm a huge fan of Sugasan, who is the chief designer of Lexus, has been doing amazing work since he's taken over this, I would call his high watermark. Uh, my feedback would be, 
take high use items like the air conditioning compressor, the neck warmer in the convertible, the cooled and heated seats in the convertible, and the coupe for that matter, and make a separate hard button for those, that would make the overall experience safer, and especially with beautiful buttons like this, make it a lot more pleasant place to be. I'm gonna go out on a limb here, and before I do, need to remind you that I am a complete and utter Dave Ramsey cheapskate. So you can imagine the list of new cars that I would write a check for is very short. Uh, Porsches, uh, a Lotus, believe it or not, a Dodge Challenger, and of course, an E63S wagon. But that list, it grows by one today. And no, not because it's the fastest car out there, and yes, she's got a little cowl shake, uh, but really, it's because she is one of the prettiest cars to come around in a long time and now prettier without a roof. But most importantly, because unlike that E63S wagon after the warranty runs out, this one will never leave you stranded on the side of the road. Wow, a couple of blasts up and back the hill. I've already gone through a quarter of a tank. It's been great, but wow, a quarter of a tank.